This is my homemade Guitar Hero controller. I built it back in 2020 when a friend I used to play Guitar Hero with introduced me to Clone Hero and I needed a guitar controller to give it a go. Once I had a working prototype, I played on it until I lost interest and it has been sitting in this half finished state in my garage ever since. Today I'm going to give it the love it deserves and finish it off so I can hang it on my wall of unused projects. And I might even have a surprise for everyone at the end, so make sure you stick around. The body of the guitar is made up of three pieces of MDF. The outer two layers are 6mm thick and the internal layer is 16mm thick with a large pocketed out section to allow for cables to pass through and for weight reduction. The neck is made up of two pieces of pine that slot together like a jigsaw puzzle. I did this as the full length of the neck won't fit in my little CNC machine and the jigsaw joint meant I could just fill the joint with some glue, slide the two parts together with no need for fasteners. The fretboard is made from a piece of thin plywood which I then stained to give the darker colour and then stuck in place with double sided tape. I used mechanical keyboard switches for the fret buttons and strum bar but I never got around to fitting a whammy bar or start and select buttons. When I began this project I still hadn't had my first PCBs produced professionally so I wasn't aware just how easy and affordable it is so I just milled them on my CNC instead as they weren't that complex. I'm going to start off by stripping all the electronics out so I can give everything a good sand and finish it off properly with some paint and clear coat. The neck is held in place by some captive nuts that are hidden by the fretboard and they are bolted through from behind with this nice little aluminium plate to make it look like a real guitar. The neck doesn't need much work, I'm just going to sand it back first and ensure that it is nice and smooth. I've got some of this orange oil left over from treating my laundry tabletop, so I'm going to rub a bit of that in to try and bring out any grain I can in the pine before sealing it with a spray varnish. Let's move on to the body of the guitar while I wait for the varnish to dry. Since we can't rely on MDF for threading screws into it, I decided to use threaded brass inserts. I need to glue the rest of these in for the bottom cover first and then I'll start sanding. I've decided I want a nice glossy black finish on the body. To do that though, I need a nice smooth surface first, so I'll begin by sanding with some 120 grit sandpaper to remove any of the high spots around the outside edge where the layers of MDF are visible. Once that is complete, I'm going to give it its first coat with some primer filler to help seal the MDF and allow me to easily see the high spots so I can work on them with a finer grit sandpaper. Then I'm just going to keep repeating the process of sanding and spraying with filler and slowly working my way down to finer grit sandpaper until I can no longer see the joins around the edge. Now that the visible joins are gone, I'm going to work on smoothing out the surface in preparation for paint. So I'm going to sand everything again with 600 grit paper. Once the surface feels smooth to the touch, I'm going to move on to the 1200 grit to make it as smooth as possible. The end result should be a nice consistent smooth surface that doesn't feel gritty anywhere. Now I'm going to give it a spray with some paint. I don't have a spray gun or a compressor with enough capacity to run one properly, so I've chosen to use an automotive grade touch-up can. If you're aiming for a nice glossy finish, I find it's best to use automotive paint because it's designed to sand nicely, meaning you can keep working on it with fine grit sandpaper until you are happy with the final surface finish. I've chosen this Duplicolor paint called Petroleum Mika as it's a nice shimmery black and was on clearance at my local automotive parts store. I'm going to give it a couple of coats and a very light sand in between to ensure the surface is as smooth as possible. Once I'm happy with the coverage of the black, I will go over the top of it with an acrylic gloss to finish it off. Now, let's take a look at the electronics while we wait for the paint to dry. This is the new fret button PCB. Of course, I've decided to include some RGB LEDs to light the clear fret buttons up in the correct colours and to allow for effects while playing. I've already populated the surface mount parts, so let's solder the switches in and begin to assemble the neck. There's a total of eight wires that need to run down the neck, one for each of the switches, a ground, five volt power, and a signal wire for the RGB LEDs. I'm going to leave about 150 mil hanging out the end of the neck so they can be easily connected to the strum bar PCB once the neck is attached to the body. If you decide to build one of these and you don't want the LEDs, you can leave out the signal and five volt wires as the switches only need a ground and their corresponding signal pins to function. I've used a bit of Cat5 network cabling for my neck wiring since I had some here, but any thin gauge wire you can get is fine too. Ideally, if you have the correct colours for the fret buttons, it will make it easier to keep track of the wiring. The network cable only matches a few of the fret button colours, so I've taken photos of the net PCB before I seal it in the neck so I know what to do when I get up to the strum bar wiring. I already have some clear acrylic buttons from the original guitar, but since PCB Way is a sponsor of the channel, I reached out to them and asked if they could resin print a set of buttons and a strum bar for me to use on the project so I can check out the quality of the resin printing. I got the fret buttons printed in the UTR8100 transparent option and the strum bar in the regular UTR8360. 
I've seen photos of the clear prints from them before, so I knew they'd be pretty clear, but the clarity of these buttons has blown me away in person. The photos definitely don't do them justice. They're also a nice tight fit on the mechanical switches, so no need for glue like I had to do with my original acrylic buttons. The strum bar can be printed with a regular FDM printer, but since you'll spend hours holding onto it, the nice smooth finish of the white resin is going to really improve the overall feel of the device, and parts like this one are only a couple of dollars, so it's worth it even just for the cleaner look in my opinion. I've designed the fret buttons to limit the travel of the mechanical switches to just after their actuation point, making the buttons much faster to press and release fully than a normal mechanical switch. The downside to this is that I need to remove the tops of the switches to fit the fret buttons as I can't push them far enough on otherwise. I suspect there are probably plenty of low travel mechanical switch options available nowadays, but I didn't want to rework my original design too much, and this worked quite well on the original, so I'm going to stick with it for now. I'm going to finish off the neck by reattaching the fretboard with a couple of dots of super glue so we can move on to the strum bar assembly. First we need to attach the neck to the body though, so the wires can be soldered to the strum bar in position. While everything was apart, I gave the neck retainer plate a sand, polish and clear coat to get rid of the machining marks and make it look a bit more presentable. I'll feed the neck PCB wires through the holes in the body, and then bolt it in place with my countersunk M5 screws through the retainer plate. Now that the neck is attached again, we can move on to the strum bar. The strum bar PCB is nice and easy to assemble. Just solder the two switches in place and connect 10 wires to the outgoing side of the PCB and then the 8 wires from the neck get soldered to the incoming side of the PCB. I've given the strum bar mount the same polish and clear coat treatment that the neck retainer plate got, so let's assemble the strum bar module now. I'll insert a bit of 4mm carbon rod into either end of the strum bar and fit it back into the strum bar mount. I've used a couple of spare bits of PCB material to make the retainer for each end of the bar. There's about 0.1 of clearance between the strum bar pivots and the retainers so they're free to turn smoothly. The PCB is then attached to the bottom with some M3 screws and then the entire assembly can be bolted into the body. A couple of quick flicks of the bar here are a good idea to ensure that no wires are obstructing the movement of our strum bar. That's it for the strum bar so let's move down to the end of the guitar to wrap things up. The whammy bar mount is entirely 3D printed. I'll start off by fitting some M3 threaded brass inserts and then I'm going to press this R4ZZ bearing into the side of the support. A 10k potentiometer slides through from the other side of this bracket and the bearing supports the shaft to prevent damage to the potentiometer. You could probably do this without the bearing but eventually the side loading on the potentiometer is going to wear it out so the bearing should increase its lifespan dramatically. Now I have to carefully get the washer and nut in place on the potentiometer shaft before I push it right through the whammy bar mount and into the bearing. Then I can tighten the nut to hold it all in place. Now, finally I can bolt this bracket up to the bottom side of the end cover plate that I've also polished and clear coated. I've left two 12mm holes for the start and select buttons so there's plenty of options available for momentary switches that can be used here. The ones I'm using came from my local electronics supplier for a couple of bucks each, so they should do nicely. Now, let's finish off the wiring. I've chosen to use a cheap Arduino Pro micro copy for this build, as it has enough pins available and I find them easy to work with. There's loads of other microcontrollers that would be suitable too, but I already have one of these here. I'm going to connect all 12 of the button signals to the digital I.O. pins 0 through to 11. The order doesn't really matter, as they are all just buttons and I'll need to map them in Clone Hero anyway. The ground and 5 volt wires get connected to their counterparts on the Arduino and I'm going to connect the LED signal wire to digital pin 16. Finally, the potentiometer has power and ground connected to it and the signal output is going to be connected to A0. All that's left to do now is feed a USB cable through the hole in the body, connect it to the Arduino and bolt the end cover on and flash some code. Here's a look at the finished project. I can't show you any audio for fear of copyright claims but here's a quick look at some gameplay footage. This is definitely me playing, and not my mate standing in as a stunt double because I haven't played for years. By this stage you're probably thinking, that's cool Dan, but I can't build something like that without a CNC machine. But don't worry, I've got you covered. I've converted my design into a 3D printable version that I'm going to publish for free to GitHub in the coming weeks so you guys can build one of your own too. It's split into sections so that even a little 200 by 200 printer like mine can print all the parts needed for the build. I'll also be publishing the code and some wiring diagrams to ensure this is as easy to build as possible. This is a great starter project if you're just getting started with soldering and building stuff, so I encourage you to give it a go. 
I'm not going to paywall any of my projects, so if you feel like you want to help support the channel and keep the cool projects like this coming, I have a buy me a coffee where you can send me a couple of bucks to help with the purchase of parts for upcoming projects. It's not a subscription service like some of the other options, so you won't get locked into anything and it helps me continue to be able to provide high quality, free projects for everyone to enjoy. Thanks for watching.